welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I want to get into another really great artist with you today. Uh, an artist that uh, is very underappreciated and underrecognized. An artist by the name of Eva Hesse. Eva Hesse, in my opinion, is a true inspiration in the area of process art. In other words, art that focuses on the process of making rather than the byproduct. Eva Hesse is comparable to none, second to none, and probably one of the greatest process artists ever to live. She was born in Hamburg, Germany at a very uneasy time. She was but a month old on January the 12th when Adolf Hitler chose to reoccupy the Rhineland and basically begin what would evolve into World War II. Her family being Jewish in a Nazi Germany fled their home and arrived in New York City in 1939 when she was only two years old. As a little girl, her first memories weren't of holidays or birthdays or playing with friends. She was running from soldiers. She was living a life of trauma. At six years old, after arriving in the United States, she became an American citizen. Her mother suffered from manic depression and never really was able to cope with the mental stress brought on by the Nazis and ended up committing suicide when Eva was only 10 years old. Fleeing from Germany, her mother's poor choices and a genetic pull towards anxiety through her life, she was able to make art part of her own therapy of dealing with life. She once said, art is the easiest thing in my life. And that's ironic. It doesn't mean that I've worked little on it but it's the only thing I've never had to do. She received some artistic training in high school and went on to the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn and eventually would end up at Yale University. At Yale, she was under the instruction of one of the greatest geometric abstraction painters of all time, Joseph Albers, who was also one of the greatest art educators ever to live. Another of these process artists was an artist by the name of Saul LeWitt. In 1960, Saul LeWitt and Eva Hess met and became very close friends. Eva Hess found herself facing a very severe creative block in about 1965, and they discussed this back and forth. Back in those days, people used to write actual letters to one another, not emails or text messages or things that we do in the modern world, but an actual physical letter written by hand. At any rate, I'm trying not to digress too far off topic, Saul LeWitt ended up replying to her frustration in a letter. The letter read something like this. Perhaps you've decided that you want to make great artwork. Perhaps you're having a hard time getting started making great artwork as you're afraid that your artwork won't actually turn out that great. You start looking for a great idea because you want your great art to mean great things to great people. Before you know it, you may be thinking that you shouldn't make artwork unless it can decide on a purpose and a way of life, a consistent approach to even some impossible end or even an imagined end. You find yourself not making anything at all, and what's more, you hate every minute of it. Well, don't. Forget all that. Learn to say fuck you to the world once in a while. You have every right to. Just stop thinking, worrying, looking over your shoulder, wondering, doubting, fearing, hurting, hoping for some easy way out, struggling, gasping, confusing, itching, scratching, mumbling, bumbling, grumbling, humbling, stumbling, rumbling, rambling, gambling, tumbling, scumbling, scrambling, hitching, hatching, bitching, moaning, groaning, honing, boning, horse shitting, hair splitting, nitpicking, piss trickling, nose sticking, ass gouging, eyeball poking, finger pointing, alleyway sneaking, long waiting, small stepping, evil lying, back scratching, searching, perching, be smirching, grinding, grinding, grinding away at yourself. Stop it and just do. Do something. Do anything. Do drawings, clean, clear, but crazy like machines, larger, bolder, real nonsense. That sounds wonderful, real nonsense. More nonsensical, more crazy, more machines, more tits, more twats, more tallywhackers, whatever. Make them abound with nonsense. Try and tickle something inside you, your weird humor. You belong in the most secret part of you. Don't worry about cool, make your own uncool. Make your own, your own world. If you fear, make it work for you. Draw and paint your fear and anxiety. Stop worrying about big deep things, you must practice being stupid, dumb, unthinking, and empty. Then you'll be able to do, do something, do anything. Don't worry about trying to do good work, try to do some bad work. The worst you can think of and see what happens, but mainly relax and let everything go to hell. You are not responsible for the world, you are only responsible for your work. So do it. And don't think that your work has to conform to any idea or flavor. It can be anything that you want it to be. But if life would be easier for you if you stopped working, then stop. Don't punish yourself. However, chances are, it's so deeply ingrained in you, it would be far easier for you to just do. Do something. Do anything. By the mid-1960s, Eva Hesse was becoming known and respected as a very young artist. She wasn't really into the whole feminist movement that was fashionable at the time. However, she was very much seen as a hero 
by the women's liberation movement. Her art consistently uses what I would consider to be very ugly media. Latex, cheesecloth, fiberglass, wire, rope, cinder blocks, and the like. Just these very bulky textural materials, and she's able to weave them together in a very beautiful way. Not beautiful in a contemporarily aesthetic sort of way of defining the word, but in a beautiful way in that she's able to deal with her own existence and her own personal anxieties in a positive way. These are deep personal memories. These are horrific events that no person, let alone a little girl, should have to deal with in their life. Her art is her therapy. Although her art becomes a very helpful piece of her life, it's also important that she underwent psychotherapy throughout her entire life. She once said, In my life, because my life has been so traumatic, so absurd, there hasn't been a normal, happy thing. I'm the easiest person to make happy and the easiest person to make sad because I've gone through so much. Many people wonder what her artwork is about and what the meaning is behind it. But the very, very simple answer is, who cares? This isn't art that's for you. It's for her to deal with her things, but she's putting it out there, putting it out there for us to consume. Sometimes as viewers of art, we need to step our own vanity back and understand that sometimes art is not about us. It's about the artist. Following Joseph Albers lead, she also went into education, teaching at the School of Visual Arts in New York. One year into her teaching program, she was beginning to really flourish as an artist. But shortly after that, she was diagnosed with brain cancer. Upon discovering that she had a terminal illness, she decided to have one of her assistants destroy three of her artworks that were very, very difficult to explain. Thanks for clicking on the video and checking out this one on Eva Hess, one of the greatest artists of, of our time and uh, one that we need to go back and look to, someone that we need to know, a story that is very inspirational and is very meaningful to so many people. Sometimes as artists we think that, that the things that we deal with are individualistic to ourselves when really there are lots of things that we all deal with and go through in life that other artists are, have dealt with that exact same thing and those exact same situations and even in the case of Eva Hesse, a lot of things that are even more traumatic than we could even imagine. And what an inspiration that she kept working, kept doing it, and kept moving forward. What an inspiration to anyone that's wanting to get better at art and making art. Hey, thanks for again checking this out and I uh, hopefully you can check out some of my other videos and uh, get some other content on other really great arts that are out there.